I have some advanced formatting features or options I want to show you that you can apply to your report. In fact, some of them we already covered when we applied formatting to our forms. As you recall, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to designing our forms and reports. But before we make any design changes here, let me introduce you to this report. It's my customer details. I've got fields here and let me click and drag this scrolly bar over more over here. Let's go ahead and go back. First thing I want to do is let's go ahead and change the title of our report. To do that, let's right click in a blank area and go to the design view. Now if you don't have a title and you want to add a title to the report, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either come up here on the design tab and go to the controls group. And I have to click on the drop down arrow for controls so I can see my controls. And here you want to select Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, I don't mean to label the label, but that's what AA reminds me of. In any case, go ahead and click on it and then hover over in the report header section and either click and drag your box, the label box, or just go ahead and click. But if you just click, you get a teeny tiny little label box and you won't see anything until you start typing something. And there you go. Now, if you want to apply formatting to it, you can't do it while you're in edit mode or while the cursor is flashing in the label. So if you come up here, click on the format tab, you see you can't apply anything, bagel, zero. So what you want to do is you want to hit the enter key to get out of the edit mode with the label still selected. And then you can go ahead and make it bold, italics, well, whatever you want in the font group there. But I'm not going to do it that way. With it selected, I'm going to hit the delete key on the keyboard because the other way that I did it, and that you can do it too, is come up here, click on the design tab, go to the header footer group, and just click on title. It adds the label down below for you. And you can go ahead, once it adds it, make, well, if you don't like the default text within it, make changes to it. And the difference between the two, well, once you add it by using the title way, you can always go back to it in an instant by clicking on it. So if you're out here gallivanting in the report, making changes, and you're like, ooh, I need to go back to the title. Well, you can come up here and click on it once, but if you need to make changes to it, you have to, after you select it, click on it again, and then you're in edit mode. But like I said, if you're out and about here and you come up here and you click on title, it takes you not only right to it, but in edit mode. Ooh, makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Well, in any case, while I'm in edit mode, let me go ahead and delete details, hit enter. And so it's up to you. Do the label thing or the title. Just keep in mind that when you add a label already here and you're like, yeah, I want to do the title you probably want to delete the label because if you click on title, it puts the title on top of your label. So choose one or the other. In any case, let's go ahead and resize this. And I can do that by hovering over the right middle resizing handle until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then I can click and drag in or go out or double click really fast to do a best fit. That works. And then next, how about selecting a text box or label? And when you select one, if you notice dash line that goes around all the others, including the one that you selected, do you remember what that means? As you recall in an earlier training video, it means that that, well, in this case, the selected label is part of a table. And so to find out any other labels or text boxes that are part of the table, especially if you really can't focus on that thin dotted line, just hover in the upper left-hand corner. I don't know if you can see it, the little tag there. Well, you could probably see the four-way arrow. Click on it and it selects everything within the table, the labels and the corresponding text boxes or those things that are part of the table. Now, if you want to be able to move, like, let me click and just select the, let me click off and select the customer name text box independently around within the detail area or section. I can't do that as long as it's part of the Borg or the table. So I have to break up the table or remove it. And you can do that by, well, when you click on the tag to select everything, in the design view, come up here, click on the arrange tab, and go to the table group and remove the layout. But I'm not going to do that, but we learned about that in an earlier training video. And it's only available here, not in the layout view. Because if you go to the layout view, you just get these three options. Well, let me show you. Hit two birds with one stone, because if you can't see the little tag in the upper left hand corner, the layout view, you'll be able to see it. So let's right click on the tab, go to the layout view. And well, there's the tag. And you only see that when you select any one of these cells here, because if you click off of it, you don't get the tag. So go ahead and select a cell, and then you see it, click on it, and it selects all the cells within the table. So like I said, when you come up here, click on the Arrange tab, but in the Layout view, 
over in the table group, you don't get the remove layout option. You just get, well, we can change the layout from stack to tabular, but we won't do that. How about grid lines? So remember, when it comes to working with your table, these items that are within the table group, you want to select the table because if you just select one of these cells within the customer name field, it'll only apply to that field. So we want to click on the tag. You know, you're working with the table with these items in the table group. So let's go ahead and click on grid lines, click on the drop down arrow, and I can add horizontal, vertical, top, bottom, or ooh, let's do both. Select that, click off, and there's my thin little gray grid lines between top, bottom, left, and right. And let's see, let's go ahead and select a cell, click on the tag, click on grid lines. What other options do we get? Ooh, some color. Oh, let's spice it up with something maybe red. And click off. There's the red. Click on it. Click on the tag. Click on grid lines. What else? We can change the width, make it something horrendously large. Six point. You get my point. Let's go down to border. Something from solid to, ooh, dashing. Select that and then click off and go, oh, that's horrifying. Undo, undo. Let's go ahead and undo all that. And I'll go back to just the thin gray grid line here for my table. And then next, how about if we change the background for our column titles? So instead of this kind of burgundy, what we can do is go ahead and click and select the first cell in that row and then hover over on the left hand side until you can see a black arrow pointing to the right. Click on it and it selects everything over in that title row. So once we have it selected, we can come up here, click on the Format tab, go to the Control Formatting Group, and let's click on Shape Fill, and let's do something like, ooh, a dark purple. Hover over it, it says Purple Accent for Darker 25%. Oh, that's a fun name. Select that, and not too bad. And speaking of colors here, we got our alternating row colors, so it goes from white to green, white to green, and why does it do that? These banded rows help us keep us within the focus of the row that we're looking at. So fall cleaning, if I go up, I hit white, or if I go down, I hit white. And so I want to keep in that green row. So if you want to change that so it's not green, like maybe something complementary to the purple here. Well, green kind of is, but we can change that. In any case, go ahead and change it. You need to click out in this gray area here, and then come up here on the Format tab, go to the Background group, and you get the Alternate Row Color. You don't get it if you have something selected within it, and I mean literally and figuratively. You don't get it. you got to watch my video. Or if you click on the tag, you still don't get it. What did I say? There you go. Go ahead and click off in that little white area, and then you can go ahead and get the alternate row color. Let's go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow, and we can do, uh, we can try light purple and see that, and then go ahead and click off and, well, let me deselect that. There we go because the orange borders was throwing me, and that was the selection. I'm like, uh, I don't like that, but hey, that's all right. I like that color. Okay, next, how about some alignment options for like our customer ID column here? This is aligned left, so if I go ahead and click down below to make it aligned like this one, I think that, no, that's aligned left too. In any case, if I want to align both of them, then I have to select both. So click on the Fields down below, hold down the shift key and click on the title up above, and then you can see you've got both selected. And then to go ahead and change it to middle alignment, come up here on the format tab, go to the font group, and there's middle. You can do it that way, or you can bring up the property sheet by right clicking on the border and going down to properties. And then over here in the property sheet for, well, it says multiple selection for what we have here. You can see down below where it says text align. Click in there and double click to change it to right. Right. Double click. Distribute. Ooh, that really breaks it up. If you don't want to double click to toggle through all the options, you can click on the drop down arrow and see what's available. We'll go back to center and then go ahead and close out. Let's do some more fun things like how about I want to go ahead and collapse the customer name. I want to try to squeeze everybody in here and not have them so well spaced out because this is a report and it's going to cut it off and I don't want these cut off. So let's go ahead and hover over the right hand side of the customer name fields until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and click and drag to pull it in, pull it in. Come on, we got to fit everybody. So we got to keep squeezing it in. But the problem that I run into is that it cuts off the name. And I'm like, ghost hunters, uh, who is that? Instead of having this stretched out, well, what we can do is we can go ahead and have these fields do a text wrap. And so we'll do the can grow feature that says you can grow not horizontally but vertically. 
So when it comes over and it wants to cut it off, it'll take that and wrap it underneath so we can see what Ghost Hunters A is. To do that, let's go ahead and bring up the property sheet for this and we can let's right click on a border or just right click anywhere. And there we go, there's the properties. And let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm on the All tab and there you go, can grow. No, double click, yes. And then you see it automatically takes that and wraps around so Ghost Hunters, oh America, that's nice. Let's go ahead and close out. Okay, next let's do some conditional formatting. So if you have a column that has a bunch of numbers and you want to focus just on a few or apply some formatting or highlights to a range of values, like let's say I want to format values between, or the customer ID, whose numbers are between, let's see, 31365 and 32411. So with my numbers data type field here, to go ahead and highlight those, well, between those ranges of numbers, with it selected just any cell here in that column. Come up here on the Format tab, go to the Control Formatting Group, and click on Conditional Formatting, and it says Show Formatting Rules for the Customer ID. Well, that's where we're at. If we were somewhere else, we can go ahead and change it and show it for the other column, but we're right here. Let's go ahead and create a new rule for the Customer ID. Click on New Rule, and we want to check values in the current record or use an expression. So down below, it says format only cells where the field value is between two numbers. And what are those numbers? So if I type in 31365 at the low end, and the high end is 32411. So it's like anything greater than or equal to 31365, and then anything less than or equal to 32411, so between. And then what format do you want to apply to it? We'll make it bold, italics. We'll just use everything that we can in the book. And we'll use a fill color. We'll make it you know, the purple. Uh, let's see the font color. Maybe we'll go ahead and make it white. There's the preview. Does it work for you? Okay, I'll go ahead and click okie dokie. And then click, well, you can apply it, but clicking OK is like applying it. But in any case, there's a rule. So if you're like, eh, I want to make changes to it, go ahead and edit it. Let me click cancel and then click okie dokie and it applies to it. Now, where's the fill color? Shouldn't there be fill color? Well, you won't see it here in the layout view. The only place you'll see the back fill color of the purple is in the report view. You won't even see it in print preview, which means if you don't see it in there, it's not going to come out of your printer. But we get all the other formats, which, well, doesn't work for me here because white against white. Oh, that's terrible. Let's go ahead and right click so I can show you the only view that it actually works in, the report view. There you go. When you actually click inside the cell where it pops. So you may not want to use that back color here or fill color for those cells because that ain't doing it for me and like I said right click go to print preview what you see there is what's coming out of your printer so uh, undo edit let's right click and go back to our report view and let's right click and go back to our layout view and then to make changes to it well come up here click on the format tab conditional formatting and let's edit the rules and then, of course, the fill color isn't the issue, really. It's that I selected the font color that's white, and oh, yuck. We can go back to automatic, make it black, click okie dokie, okie dokie, and oh, that's better. So I don't have to worry about that bleaching in the white background. And then, of course, to go ahead and remove it, conditional formatting, and delete the rule, click okie dokie, and we're back to where we started. Now how about counting up how many records we have in our report. Let's begin one, two, three, four. No, I'm kidding. What we can do is we can use the count function to be able to count this up and have the result down at the bottom of the report. To do that, let's come up here, click on the design tab, go to the grouping and totals group, click on totals, and we want to count. We want to count our records. Go ahead and select that and then scroll down to the bottom and it adds it right there. So when I right click, and go to the print preview because what you see in there is going to come out of your printer. Down at the bottom, well, you can see that the 4 and 1 is shaved off just a little bit there. So let's go ahead and right click, go to, well, design view or layout view, it doesn't matter here. Let's go down at the bottom and there we go. Just hover over the bottom and click and drag that. Oh, you see how when I did that, it actually shot across here. Well, that looks like it's part of the Borg, the collective, the table here. When I click on it, see that's included. Oh, that's not going to work for me. Well, maybe I want to go ahead and have the number here moved over to the right or just, you know, move it independently of the rest of the 
cells here within the table or the column here. And to do that, I've got to remove the layout. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add a label here that tells us what this number is about instead of just 14. So to add a label, well, let's go right click to the design view. And there we go. There's the count. You can see the dash line that goes around it that encapsulates that. Let's come up here, click on the design tab, go to the controls, click on control. Let's add the label AA, click, and then just go ahead and click here, and then we'll type in records. Or you can put total number of records, whatever works for you. Hit enter. And then let's go ahead and hover over the border and click and drag that. And you see, it doesn't let me do that because it's part of the Borg, the table. Everything has to be just perfect when it comes to being part of the table. So to go ahead and remove the records, so I can resize the records, the label independently from the rest here, and also move them about. Let's go ahead and select the label here and hold down the shift key and select the function, the count function in its own text box there. And then come up here, click on the arrange tab, go to the table group and remove it from the layout. And whew, that was close. Let's go ahead and hover over the bottom of the grid, click and drag and stretch that open just a little bit. And then we can click and drag and move these guys around, you know, put them wherever we want. Now, the results of the count function, it looks like it's centered. So let me click off. So I want it to left align so I can put that as close to the label as possible. And the label, well, see, that's got all that extra space. So let's hover over the right middle resizing handle, double click really fast. Allows us to do it because it's not part of the collective, the table here. And I click and drag that, move it oh, right well, close, use the arrow keys. Uh, let's go up just a little bit. And then the, well, what's that little tag here? It says it's a new label and it's not associated with the control. Oh, it's got nobody to label. Let's go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and say, okay, go ahead and associate yourself with somebody or you can ignore it. Let's associate. And then it selects the adjacent guy here and it says, is this the one? Of course it is. Click okie dokie and he's happy. You don't get that little warning. That's nice. So they're buddies now. And then for the text box, remember it's center aligned. So come up here on the format tab, go to the font group at center. Let's do left. So we can move the results closer over to our label here, records. And then let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Right click, go to the print preview. Oh, well, it's getting there, right? Of course, you know how to tweak that and be able to nudge it closer and get it just looking so. Let's go ahead and close out of the print preview, close out of here, I'll save it. And the other formats that I want to show you, let's do it in another report. Let's do it the sales profit report, double click. And let's go ahead and scroll over and I'm looking at the, well, quantity sold. So we got it from smaller numbers to larger numbers. And instead of focusing on it numerically, how about if we do it graphically? I want to add data bars in these cells here that as the number gets larger, that bar gets larger. So to do that, let's right click and go to the layout view and then select one of these cells here within the quantity sold column. And then just come up here, click on the format tab, go to the control formatting group and let's do conditional formatting. Let's do a new rule and let's go ahead and select compare to other records. And so there you go. We got the shortest bar is going to be the lowest value. The longest bar is going to be the highest value. And if you want the bar color to be different, well, choose something else. But I'm okie dokie with that. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. Click OK again. And there we go. So that's 63. That's bigger than the other. What's the biggest one? 306 is getting up there. Is that the largest one? Oh, no, 500. Oh, he's pushing that bar there. In any case, you can get your data bars or graphical representation of your numbers here through the conditional formatting. And let's go ahead and scroll over here, leave that alone. Let's scroll up to the top. And I'm looking at the part number and the book title, and there's a lot of duplicates here. So can't we just go ahead and group these duplicates by customer here? So we can have all these customers grouped under one part number book title, basic medical billing. So to do that, let's go ahead and click for the part number and hold down the shift key and select also the book title since they're going to be the same in duplicate because the part number represents the book title. So they'll match up. And then to go ahead and hide the duplicates, let's bring up the property sheet by, well, just right clicking and going to properties. And then I'm on the all tab and my scroll dealie is almost all the way to the bottom here. Well, we can go up just a little bit, but I'm looking just slightly up from the bottom, the hide duplicates. It's set to no, double click to yes, and then close out. And there you go. Let me click off. 
So all the customers who purchase the same book that has the same associating part number grouped under both of those. And we don't have it duplicated over and over again. So that helps clean up our report. Now let's go ahead and go to the design view. Right click, design view. I think we have, yeah we do, we've got a page number here in the page footer. With it selected, I'm going to delete it and pretend that we don't have a page number for our report or a page numbering system. But let's come up here, click on the Design tab, go to a header footer group, and click on Page Numbers so I can show you how to insert one if you don't have one. You got the page format. I like the page N of M, so if I had 10 pages in my report, it would be like page 1 of 10, 2 of 10, 3 of 10. That's nice because when I print them off and somebody says, hey, I got five pages, and they're thinking that that's just it, because with page N, you'd think, well, that's it. But with of something more, like out of 10, and you're on page 5 of 10, you'd be like, hey, I need something more here. So page N of M. The position, top of the page, let's do the bottom page and the footer. Alignment can be center or somewhere over to the right. Click okie dokie, and let's scroll over to the far right, and there it is. Of course, you can go ahead and select that, come up here on the Format tab, and do all types of fun formats, and trebuchet to, let's do something comical, like, ooh, Comic Sans. Let's go ahead with it partially typed in, but highlighted. Hit the Enter key on the keyboard. and Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Right-click on it and go to Print Preview. And then click on it to zoom out. And do you see anything at the bottom of there, that page? Of course not. Because why? Because my report is a pig. It's got so many columns, it's going, well, bleeding over onto the second page. So until I go to the second page, I won't be able to see it. So there we go, page 103. So the first two pages is considered to be page one because, again, I don't have my columns all nice. And you see, I got a lot of space here. I got to go ahead and, well, right-click and go to the layout view and crunch these, you know. Hover over it, crunch it, and click on that, crunch that in. And then, of course, as you recall, we talked about earlier that if it doesn't automatically wrap around within the column, you can use the can grow feature. So go ahead and rewind the video to watch that again if you need to. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.